appreciate the, the prayer tonight. Uh, I was uh, listening at, uh, I listened to different preaching, but I was listening at a preacher I love to listen to on, uh, on the internet, and I was listening at him preaching. But he said uh, he's preaching, uh, you know, he, he's traveled, I think, 40 some years as evangelist, preach revivals all over the place. But one particular uh, time he was telling about, said he preached in the service. This is when his kids were little. He's got grandkids now, but he's a little boy. He said after the service, uh, he said he felt uh, his coat being pulled, you know, felt a little tug. He looked down and it was his, his son, his little boy. And he said, uh, he looked up at him and said, Daddy, he said, I'd like to have a hamburger. And uh, so he said to him, he said, son, he said, we just ate supper before we came to church. He said, you don't need a hamburger. And uh, he said two or three minutes, he felt a little tug again. He looked down and there's that little boy. He said, he looked like he had a tear in his eye. And he said, Daddy said, if I was you and you was me, I'd buy you a hamburger. <laughs> and he said, I brought him three. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Uh, so he was preaching the sermon about the, what was it, the person that came at night and they said we've already went to bed and the importunity, persistence in prayer. So that little boy, he knew how to tell it, didn't he? Kind of made me think of the woman, you know, came with her daughter that was grievously vexed with the devil and, and uh, she came to Jesus and said, Thy son of David... And uh, she is a Syrophoenician. She was a Gentile. And you remember Jesus said, that, this is something in it, interesting. Jesus said, it's not meat to take the bread and test it and give it to the dogs. And uh, she said, yeah, but the dogs eat the crumbs. <laughs> Amen. And uh, Jesus said, this is some kind of faith. Praise God, he touched that daughter. Amen. And uh, that mother and daughter rejoiced and and uh, they had never seen nobody like Jesus and what he can do. And what a blessing to know the Lord. We're in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians 1st, uh, chapter 5 and verse 5 through 9. The verse 5 is one of our memory verses that I have a problem remembering, but it's a good one. And my message tonight is, give me my title tonight. I'm excited about having a title, amen. Eight words to consider in connection with the coming of Christ. And it got on my mind hard about Jesus is coming back and uh, we'll see him one day face to face. But it just got to moving on my heart about, and I, I was uh, talking to someone and I said, I believe this message tonight perhaps was just something God was speaking to me about and perhaps maybe it'd be a blessing to you likewise. But it, it just got on my mind, on my heart. I called a preacher friend of mine uh, one, uh, one day there, I was... Uh, I was making some calls and, and I hadn't spoke to him just a little bit. He said he prays for me every day. And I said, thank God for that. I called him and he's, he's got a good voice, a strong voice. And uh, he talks kind of loud and you talk to him. And uh, so he, he, there's a lot of noise. He's on, he's on the road. His phone, he said, and, uh, and he said, I'm just coming back from Yankinville. I believe he said he'd preached the funeral of a preacher that was 92 years old. We're home to be with the Lord. He's excited. He said, Brother, I believe, I believe the Lord's soon coming. A lot of people believe that. And he's excited about that. Got me excited. And uh, we talked just a minute. Jesus is coming back, isn't it? See him face to face. But I got to thinking, it got on my heart about, and I'll just mention eight things that just come on my heart and got to thinking. In relation to he's coming, and I thought about some responsibilities also, in the uh, aspect of Jesus is coming back and uh, some ways of our thinking ought to be. And uh, I want to thank God tonight for helping me. Uh, I was thinking about my little situation I went through and it's good to be, uh, it's, it, there's some difficult times. I, I tell you what, if you have just a few things happen to you, you get a little more patient with other people. You notice that. That may be one of the good outcomes that the Lord does. And uh, a little more patient for other people. And so you more considered, I hope. But I was thinking about gratitude. Give me that gratitude for salvation. 
uh, should lead every one of us to total consecration, thanking Him and praising Him because we're saved. And I'll look in the book of 1 Thessalonians and then the book of Colossians and the book of Romans chapter 13. But to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and uh, verse 5 through 9, it said, uh, You're all the children of light and the children of the day, and we're not of the night nor of darkness. Uh, one of our memory verses, Colossians 1, 13, I believe, said, uh, have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what he did for us, didn't he? Delivered from the power of darkness. And we're the children of light now and the children of the day and we're not of the night nor of the darkness. And then he goes on and says, therefore, uh, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. That's one of the points tonight is watchfulness. And let us watch. You know, Jesus said that you know, when there's a garden of Gethsemane, and we criticize the disciples, you know, they went to sleep. But I'll be honest with you tonight, there ain't no way I'd be telling them a big lie. I'd have been the first one to sleep. I'll guarantee you that. And, uh, but uh, Jesus said, could not you watch and pray? And it's something, there's something important about watching. And I want to mention that a little when we get to that point. Uh, he said, therefore, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. And he said, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us of the day, let us be sober, and putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for helmet the hope of salvation. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation and for the privilege of being here tonight, each one in the service. And we just thank you. I appreciate each one, uh, their service to the Lord and all aspects that they serve you in, uh, the faithfulness and the prayers and all other things that is involved in, in, in the serving the Lord. We praise you for that. I pray you'd help us tonight. We look at this and I pray you'd anoint from heaven already. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I'm praising you and thanking you. Pray you'd help us, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. I'll just mention a little something. I want to praise God for it. That's a, such a little thing. And uh, I am learning that, that He is interested in little things. So we, Barry went back to Boone yesterday and uh, to the doctor and did an x-ray and checked. Him. So I said, everything looks good. She's got, I believe, three more weeks of therapy that coming in the home there and but uh, they released her as far as that they feel like she's healed up at this point. They said it takes six months, at least six months, before you get back to, I don't know what normal is anymore, you know. But anyway, uh, so we, when we, uh, we got a handicap sticker, and Bear was walking with a cane, and I'm dragging behind her. I look probably more pitiful than she does. I, uh, in fact, there's a lady opened the door for me. I said, thank God. But anyway, when we approach in the parking lot, we, we're looking for the handicap parking. And uh, so, we, of course, we've been there before, but we said, uh, it looked like there's a, a slot there, you know. And uh, so we got the, the number one place, the one most accessible and easiest to get in. And there it was, just waiting. And I said, thank God. And I got to thinking, I believe the Lord did that. And he obviously did it for Beverly's sake because if it had been just me by myself, I wouldn't deserve it. I'd have been out somewhere. There wouldn't have been nowhere. I'd have parked in the field. But I appreciate the Lord, don't you? And I ain't no better than nobody else. You said, what if there hadn't been one? Well, I'd have let Beverly out and went and found one, walked and done back and forth, you know, whatever. We'd worked it out. But sure was nice there. It was empty and so... You said, what do you do? We, we both, we said, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at that. We just, uh, so I'm praising him. He's worthy of it, ain't he? You said, well, I wouldn't think about nothing like that. Well, maybe you don't get the empty spots. You ought to praise him. Maybe. <laughs> uh, God's good. So gratitude. I'm thinking tonight, then we're in the book of Colossians chapter four and verse two. Another good verse says, continue in prayer. That's another one of my points tonight, prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving, thanksgiving. And then in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11, and he said that knowing the time now, it's high time, 
uh, wake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Nearer than when we believed, and that's for sure, isn't it? And we're lifting up our heads tonight the redemption's drawing nigh. I don't think tonight, I got to thinking about Jesus coming back. And with, with that thought in mind, uh, I got eight things. And uh, I believe hope, you couldn't, you couldn't exclude that at all. That's the first thing on the list, I thought about hope. Go in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and start verse 13 through 18, I believe. And it tells about what we believe is the rapture of the church. And uh, it said, uh, I'd not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. Uh, we got hope, haven't we? And he said, uh, uh, if, we, if we believe that Jesus and died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which we, uh, which we, uh, we uh, that are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the trump of God, the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we, which are alive and remain, are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then one of my, other, my second point is, and he said, we're full comfort one another with these words. A lot of comfort, ain't it, tonight? In the book of Thess Titus 2 and 13, it said, looking, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep it up there a minute. There, right there tells you that Jesus is deity. He's God. Looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the great God, isn't he? He's God. Amen. And so we're looking for that. That's the blessed hope. We've got hope, then we've got comfort. What a comfort that is. He's coming back. Isn't that a blessing you think about the rapture? And sometimes uh, the, the sorrows of life. You know, <clears throat> I've learned this. You don't, you don't have to be old to have sorrows of life. You can be young. Uh, somebody the other day, uh, one of, uh, uh, someone close to us actually, uh, Beverly mentioned is talking about how, you know, you meet some, somebody sometime and they're just kind of down, you know. And uh, all of us get there. Uh, you know, these TV preachers are about as fake as anything could ever be. I saw one of them. He's smiling all the time. He said, I'm never, I'm never depressed. And I thought, what a big liar, you know. But the thing about that, them people sitting there listening to that crook, it ain't working in their lives because they are depressed at times and different things, <laughs> you know, them. And he's up there telling them that, you know. But that's kind of, that's a drawing to them, you know. He, they're sitting there and he said, you'll never be depressed and you're always going to be happy and healthy and rich and everything else. And So they want to get plugged into that, you know, if they can. And, uh, but the thing about it, he's the one that's reaping benefit because they, they're feeding it to him, you know. <laughs> they ain't never figured that out yet, some of them ain't. But anyway, uh, that's a crook, ain't it? Uh, that's not telling it like, like it really is, is it? But uh, Beverly said about uh, his young per person, said it kind of down. <laughs> I remember one time, used to have a lady in our church, and she was an older lady, and she just loved to tell people what she thought. You know, I mean, just, she just, she was too candid, I thought, you know. Some people, they just, you know, sometimes you don't need to tell somebody something, it, it, you know, even if it's true. But I remember one time years ago, and I, I was just, you get in a state of blahs, you know, and. I was going through one of them times. and so. But anyway, I don't know if that's the reason I slumped tonight or not, but I, I looked at They took an x-ray in my chest, and they said, back up against the, the board here and straighten up. And I can't straighten up. I backed up and done the best I could. <laughs> yeah, I said, you'll just have to take a crooked one out. That's what I thought in my mind, but I didn't tell them that. But anyway, they got it done. But I was just walking around. You know, sometimes you do that. You know the book of Psalms, isn't it? Don't the book of Psalms... Chapter 3 say he's the lifter of my head. That's a blessing, ain't it? You know, sometimes when you get down that one of them block times, you, you, you know, your head, you be drooping, going around. But I was like that one time, <laughs> laying in our church, and so here I come, you know, 
and it's just pretty obvious. And so she said to me, she said, Roger, you have given away to your feelings, haven't you? <laughs> and that didn't help me. That made me feel worse. I said, oh, Lord. Pretty obvious. I'm glad there's comfort tonight, aren't you? In the Lord. What a comfort that is. You know, I've thought about it several times. There's not a problem that no Christian, not a problem that no Christian has, but what the rapture won't solve. Isn't that a blessing? We're leaving it all behind, aren't we? I am. I'm not hooked on to nothing, amen. In fact, there ain't no way to hook on to it, you know. I told the other week about the fellow, a friend of mine, I mean, it was the actual fact, and the guy died that day. And he was on, uh, I reckon, on a computer checking on his money, you know. But uh, I, I, I'd say he left every bit of it here. <clears throat> I know some people that got part of it, and he, it wasn't him. Uh, but uh, unhooked. You know, I believe this. You, you know, the longer you're saved, you, you kind of get unhooked from the world and, the, and this life here. You know, you get a little closer to heaven. You have a mindset change, amen? And your, your roots, you, you get to kind of pulling up the tent stakes, amen, cutting the cords. We said, praise God, don't enough, won't want nothing holding me down whenever the, I hear the shout, I'm going to move out, amen? It, it, that's part of life. There's a comfort. And then the purity. I thought about that First John chapter 3, that we don't know when he's going to appear, but we know when he doth appear, praise God, we're going to be like him, ain't we? And we're going to be like he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifying himself even as he's pure. If you've got that hope in you, it's a motivation to purify yourself, isn't it? That he's coming back. Especially, you know, when you feel like you just, it's getting closer and closer. You say, well, you know, some of these things I, you know, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, ain't it? Where he said, lay inside the weights and so forth, the sin that does the to beset it. Lay inside the weights. You know, I believe there's some things that uh, <clears throat> it wouldn't be a sin as such, but it's a weight. And somebody said anything that weights you down in the race will rob you at the finish line. I believe that, don't you? Sometimes you have to just cut loose from some things that... Uh, you know, somebody said, and this really gets into the deeper part, I guess, of Christian living, that sometimes we... we Lay aside the good for the best. You know, that's not meant it. Of course, some of us, we're, we're kind of satisfied with the good, you know. Uh, and, and the best sometimes maybe require a little more sacrifice and all that, you know. Get out of the comfort zone. I like being in the comfort zone myself. That little old bubble that I float around in. But the uh, Lord wants us to move out. You know, it's a blessing. I had a blessing the other day. Gave a lady a track and and she looked at it and she said, well, thank you. Of course, I didn't, I didn't know the first time I ever saw her, as far as I know, but maybe she was saved or whatever. I just, you know, just passing through. And I tell them, look us up on YouTube, you know. <laughs> Won't that be something? I had a preacher friend about it. He said, somebody asked you, they was talking. And Brother Mays Jackson's on a plane one time. His fellow over there talking to him and, he said to Brother Mays, he said, uh, said, you don't know who I am. And he was a lawyer from somewhere or something. And Brother Mays said, praise God, you don't know who I am either. <laughs> I'm a blood-washed child of God. I'm an ambassador for Christ. Uh, that's a higher status than a lawyer, ain't it? Amen. I like what you told about Philadelphia lawyers. I heard that they bury them 10 feet in the ground. Lawyers from Philadelphia. They said deep down they're nice guys. <laughs> if you ever had anything to do with a lawyer, that's reality there. I was preaching, telling stuff like that one time <laughs> after the service. I found out there's a lawyer in the congregation. <laughs> you know, shake hands. How are you? Good to see you. Never mind what I was preaching, I was just talking. Purity and then witness, witness. <clears throat> we want to do some of that along the way, don't we? And I was thinking, and I know you the same tonight, 
Lord soon coming back, and there's some people we're praying for. Well, I want them to get saved before it's too late, don't you? I heard of a fellow, and I mentioned that. I've never met him. But he said, and the devil had him deceived, and he said he was all right with going to hell. No, he don't know nothing about hell. He ain't all right with it. I've been praying for him. Maybe somebody, God will send somebody by and tell him a wonderful story. What, what was that I had? The gospel. The gospel, Petey, is, is God's, the gospel is God's way of calling all the world unto himself. The gospel is. It's the power of God unto salvation. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, it's the power of God. J. Harold Smith used that verse for a radio program that lasted, I believe, 60 years. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What's the power of God? The gospel. It's God's way of drawing the world to himself. But then we go on witness and then prayer. It's talking about prayer. And then our verses there it said about Colossians. Give me that again. That's a good one. Talking about prayer. And uh, it said continue in prayer and watch, watch in the same with thanksgiving. Watch. Now that, I got the, I looked that word up in the Bible dictionary I got. Somebody bought and gave it to me here. And I appreciate that. And it's a good one too. But anyway, it had, it had a, a good big paragraph. It's talking about watching. And watching in the Bible is a spiritual alertness. I mean, watch. And you know, I was thinking about the day and the time in which we're living that it's important to watch, isn't it? And the reason for that is a deception on every hand. I mean, deception, you know. You know, the devil, you know, the devil, if he, and, and you know, it's like a roaring lion. We, we studied in, uh, in Bible school, you know, putting on the whole armor of God and so forth. And uh, uh, prayer and watching. And then in our Bible school, you know, we use the verses starting at verse 10. When it finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then it talked about the loins girded with truth and the other armor that it had. And then it went down there, and I believe Brian used this in children's church, or he had PD1 opening or something, but they didn't leave verse 18 out. It talked about praying, amen, praying. I mean, prayer. Praying always, follow prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watching. There it is again, watching. There and two, follow. Uh, somebody say that word. Perseverance. 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 You're going to get an A on your pork card. <laughs> for all supplication, for all the saints, amen. Praying and watching. Praying and watching. And it kind of goes together. Being watchful. Because you're in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, I believe it is. <clears throat> and in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, there was a man that committed a terrible sin, terrible sin, fornication, within his own family there. It was bad. But uh, so Paul instructed him to deal with him in discipline as far as the church is concerned, and they did. But if I'm understanding the book of 2 Corinthians, that man repented. And Paul said, now he's repented, and you accept him back now. And, uh, and here's the thing. You ever heard this expression, don't overkill? You know, sometimes people get restored, and if some people know what they've done, and they'll never forgive them for a whole lifetime. They'll have that in the back of their mind the rest of their days. But I found that in my life that most of the time the things I condemn in other people, I've done other things a lot worse. So I better just be careful. And uh, whenever you see somebody that's fallen, restore them in the spirit of meekness, consider yourself. The book of Galatians said chapter 6, lest you also be tempted. 
Better look out. But anyway, Paul said, uh, you need to, to receive him back in and sufficient to such a one has been the punishment that was inflicted is in essence what it's saying. And Paul said, don't overkill. That's what he was saying. It don't say it in those words. But don't overkill because he said he'll, he'll, be, he'll, he'll overwhelm him. He'll be too much sorrow. I mean, now's the time to comfort him and shake his hand, hug his neck and say, thank God I'm glad you got restored and you're back in fellowship with God. And the past is the past. And so, but he, Paul said this. He said, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And you know, I was thinking, if Satan can't trip me up one way, then he'll come at me from another way. And if he can't get me just right through the front door, he'll slip in the back door in a window somewhere. And he'll have me all messed up and out of fellowship. And he'll do that. Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. He'll, he'll trip us up one way or the other if he can. So we have, we're putting on the whole arm of God, but we have to watch. Be, be alert, you know, and be mindful of, and uh, we're not ignorant of his devices. And ain't none of us a match for the devil. I might add that right here and now. No. Did you know for all the many years there, the devil, he had, uh, he had a perfect record. 100% knockout. Everybody he'd ever took on. <laughs> but praise God. There's one stepped on the scene. <laughs> one that was sinless. Praise God that had all power. He said he'd given me all power in heaven and earth. Ain't that what Jesus said in the book of Matthew 28? And the devil, he thought, he thought he had him. You know it. He's crucified. They buried him. Sealed the tomb. But that third day, the devil's knees got weak. <laughs> the word got out and said, hey, you know that one that was buried and three days later, uh, we've got word that he's alive. And I like the way uh, Lester Roloff describes it. And I don't know exactly what it was. I was in going to Bible <laughs> Institute and, you know, I thought I'd asked an intelligent question. I believe it's about the only question I ever asked and I thought it was an intelligent one. It's the only one I thought up with in every how long I went. But we studied some, or we wasn't studying at that time in the book of Ephesians, but it talked about he led captivity captive. And it was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And he preached to them, didn't he? And uh, Brother Lester Roloff said he went during that three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. And at that time, paradise was in the heart of the earth. You remember about the thief on the cross, the day of being in paradise. And then hell, we believe. Two compartments there. The rich man was in hell and he sees Lazarus from Abraham's bosom and far off and there's a guff fixed between them and so forth. Later, last roll off said during them three days, Jesus, praise God, said he went to the gate of hell. One of the demons came and he went back and told Satan himself, said there's a visitor, said his name Jesus. Well, what's he here for? Said he came to get the keys. <laughs> said the book of Revelation, I'm he that was dead and I am alive. And I'm alive for how long? Forevermore. And I had the keys of death and hell. He's got the keys, amen. You and I are there saved and on the way to heaven, received him as our own personal Savior. We ain't got a thing. He's got the keys. Amen. Captain of our salvation. He's coming back one day, amen. Riding on white horses. Ain't that a blessing? The captain. All of us that's riding behind, we're going to say, praise God, there's a the captain, you know. The word of God, a sword going out of his mouth. 
He's going to conquer the whole thing, ain't he? I like what a little boy went to Sunday school and they taught him about Jesus is coming back. Riding white horses, he's going to come back conquering. And He went home and his mama said, how'd you like Sunday school? He said, I, I like Sunday school. He said, you learn in, what'd you learn today? He said, I learned that Jesus is coming back. And my teacher told me that he's going to take over. <laughs> he's going to do that all right, ain't he? Amen. And you and I are going to be just fine, captain of our salvation. By the way, you know, whenever the devil comes, he said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But you know, I believe the verse before that said, submit yourself unto God. That, that's where the power is, where the strength is. He is our shield, ain't he? He's our refuge. He's our higher tower. Thank God tonight. Prayer and watchfulness. And then love. You know, I don't know if I understand all this or not, but Paul, whenever he was, his departure was at hand, he's talking, book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. And he said, I'm ready to be offered. I've fought a good fight and finished the course. You know, I had a preacher friend of mine and he's a good spiritual man. And, uh, and he's still a good spiritual man. But I talked to him a while back and uh, he said our church is not what it used to be. And he said, you know, it's not always the liberty that it used to be. And he said, I'm just tired of the fight. I'm not criticizing him at all tonight. He said, I'm tired of the fight. But you know, here's the truth of it is, thank God tonight, with him and with me, I'm not tired of the way, praise God, I'm not tired of the way, but I do get tired in the way. But praise God, the way is always okay, but I ain't. But he said, praise God, the Lord still comes by on occasion and touches and the liberty that I don't always feel Praise God. He touches down. I'm glad for that, aren't you? Had an old deacon in my church, and he used to tell me this. He said, I'll tell you what, preacher. He said, if you go too many days without a touch of God, you can get in a bad shape. Well, I like it when he comes by and touches, don't you? And you know what? I purposely try to get that circumstance to come about. You say, well, I'm just going, you know, I've done a lot of that too, just sat down and said, Lord, bless me if you can. And in spite of me. And he's done that too for me, thank God. But I try to get it to come about. I'll get that coming up the mountain sometimes. And I'll say, just talking, I like that talk to that phone. <laughs> That's going to be bad when that phone starts revealing stuff about me, ain't it? And starts talking to me and they can do that too, I reckon. But anyway, I said, let's, let's hear a little of that. He wrote my name, praise God. And, she, and Loretta's talking, she's already getting excited thinking about what her dad and how God used him in a great way. And in other words, uh, you know, it's good sometimes just to surround yourself with something that's going to cause something to happen, amen. Nothing wrong with that, is it? You know what that uh, John R. Rice said? He encouraged himself by singing the songs of faith. And it worked for him. In fact, I heard Tom Malone said they were preaching in the conference one time, he and John Rice. And John Rice uh, wrote s several songs, and he's a great preacher. And anyway, he played the piano, and he said, Tom Malone said they, they announced it and they had a big conference they're supposed to have and he said hardly anyone showed up. And he said, we wouldn't have had nobody hardly if we hadn't went and got some of the kids from school to come <laughs> during the day. Used to, you could do that. When I was in the fifth grade, they used to have a revival meeting during the daytime and our principal, now get a hold of this, what if this was going on in our country today? It wouldn't be in the mess it's in now, would it? Amen. Our principal, Mr. T.C. Osmond, of Rowan River Elementary School. Mr. T.C. Alden, he was a tremendous Christian. So whenever they'd have a revival meeting 
at Roan River Baptist Church, which is just across the road from the school, he would take the fifth grade class and take us to revival meeting. On one of those occasions, there's a young man in our uh, class in the fifth grade, young boy, I should say, and he got saved. And boy, Mr. Alden, you talking about lighting him up. He came back and we all got back in the classroom and Mr. Altman said, and he mentioned that young boy there and he told the whole class and he said wonderful news and he called his name said he got saved today. That was in the fifth grade when I was going to school. You say, how many years was that ago? Around 125 years ago. But it actually happened. Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> But it said, Paul said that uh, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the righteous Lord judge shall give me in that day and not to me only but unto also them that love his appearing. Love his appearing. I love to see him come back. See him face to face. Then praise, praise. I'm, I'm finishing up this praise. And you know, here's another thing that'll help you. You said, boy, I don't know. I don't th- know if God's in a hundred mile of me or not. Well, sometimes it's good just to praise him. Yeah, get the first handicap spot. That ain't the first time we've got the first one. The one most accessible. I said, there it is. Just waiting on us. We said, praise the Lord. But you know, I read in the book of Psalm 150, and all over the book of Psalm, praise the Lord. And the last verse of that Psalm, give it to us, praise God. And it said, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord, praise you the Lord. It starts out in that song about praising the Lord. But notice this tonight. It did not say praise Muhammad, nor Confucius, nor Buddha, nor the Pope. It said praise ye who? The Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's what, that'll help out. Till he comes and gets us, be good just to praise him, wouldn't it? Praise him and say praise God. Praise Him, praise Him. We used to sing that, didn't we, Lord Randall? All you little children, God is love. God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all you little children. Praising the Lord. So I'm happy in the Lord. But I need to shut her down, amen. I feel that, I sense that. Preacher Jimmy Bryant, 94 years old, came to our church and preached for us when I was pastoring the tabernacle. And he gave me some good advice. And he said, Roger, if you could ever learn. He said, if you could just ever learn to quit when you get through. (laughs) That's good, ain't it? That's good advice, wasn't it? And that's been, that's in the 1980s. And I'm still working on that lesson, but I thank God for Preacher Jimmy. Let's stand and pray tonight. Maybe you've got needs and things on your heart tonight for prayer. Already request mentioned here in the service. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we lift our hand toward heaven. These burdens, these things of life. And we preach and we rejoice and we praise you. And then the cares of life and life itself sometimes We find ourselves on our knees and we're crying out again. And Praise God, the blessing of it is you're still hearing again. And you're still answering again, thank God. And though a man falls seven times, praise God, we've got a a God that's able with His strong arm, the right hand of His righteousness, praise God, to lift us up again. And I praise you for that. Pray you'd help us tonight. These needs that's been mentioned here, needs that have not been mentioned that for prayer and the Lord's help. We pray you'd just be there in a special way and bestow an extra portion of grace that's needed, Lord. And we thank you. We praise you. Dump us out a handful on purpose, God, if it, in your mercy and in your will. We'll praise you tonight. Thank you. We rejoice. 
and salvation, you're soon coming. And I believe there's some things that we need to be thinking about. Perhaps, perhaps some of these are some of those things. Help us to be watchful and prayerful. And one day, we're going to meet you. We're going to see you face to face. Thank God faith is going to give way to sight. What a blessing. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.